Hello there. It's quite a pleasure to have you join us here on the Big Q. And joining me in the studios is the country director of World Bank Randa, Mrs. Caroline Taki. Welcome to the studios. Thank you, Amy. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It's great to be here. Sure. Now, uh, you know, when I called out for questions uh, earlier in the week, uh, as telling everyone the next on the BQ is uh, so and so. And, and, and quite shocking, someone told me, uh, can you tell her to tell me how I can open up a bank account in the World <laughs> Bank? And it, it, it got me thinking, maybe people do not know what World Bank does, uh -huh. and uh, that would be a few. So we would love to start off, tell us a little about uh, World Bank and how it operates and something like that. That's a very good question, and it's not the first time I've had it, in fact. So. Um, uh, let me just explain a little bit about the World Bank. The World Bank um, lends money to co country governments. We lend money to governments, not to individuals. So I'm afraid for your, for, your, for your questioner, I'm afraid they're going to have to go and open a bank account in one of the other very good banks that you've got available to you in Kigali. Yes. Um, we lend money to governments to invest in, uh, in activities and investments that will reduce poverty, that will promote growth, and that will promote the kind of uh, social outcomes that the World Bank stands for. So uh, in Rwanda, for example, we have an envelope, a three-year envelope of money, which is about $730 million, which we're programming alongside with government. So Thank you so much for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go into the questions. We have Bamwe CJ Jackson. Is World Bank impressed with Rwanda's achievement on the MDGs? And is this likely to influence the future funding allocations? Um, Rwanda's done a fantastic job on the MDGs, um, on all the core ones, poverty, on the health outcomes, on the education outcomes, we've seen tremendous progress. So you've seen poverty reduce from sure. about 58% of the population down to 44% in a relatively short period of time. Yeah. Now this has been pushed by strong growth, which has been shared across the population, inequality has come down, but it's also been promoted by the government's ability to deliver basic services. Yes. So Rwanda is a country where you put money into the education budget, money into the health budget, and you get results out the other end. It doesn't happen everywhere, so we're very impressed it's happened in Rwanda. So the MDGs themselves are bound up in that assessment that we make. So yes, it's always good for us to see results. Now over to Gabriel Abiuma. What is your advice to BNR, that is the Central Bank of Rwanda, regarding the scarcity of dollars and how this is affecting the economy and the prices of commodities that are shooting up? <laughs> I think I don't completely agree with the phrasing of the question. Um, it's true that the Rwandan franc has been depreciating against the dollar, but a l most, most currencies have been depreciating against the dollar. We've got a very strong dollar at the moment. It's strong against the euro, it's strong against the pound, mm -hmm. it's strong against the Rwandan franc, it's strong against uh, the Japanese yen. And th this is a normal practice. This is what exchange rates do. They mediate between different economies with, di with di different growth rates. Mm -hmm. If you've got a floating exchange rate, it will bounce up and down a little bit, and that's, that's normal. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... Uh, the governor of the central bank has made his points have been spot on that it, this is not something uh, that one should be particularly concerned about. Um, you, we saw yesterday in the news that the uh, Chinese had devalued their currency by by some yuan, and this should be actually good for the Rwandan economy. Many of your imports are from China, yeah. and now those imports will be a bit cheaper. Yeah. And so it's a complicated world, this globalized economy. Mm. Uh, the, the, the central bank does a pretty good job of maintaining uh, macroeconomic stability. Um, and I think that uh, going forwards, an emphasis on expanding the export base, making sure you're not too dependent on just one or two or three commodities. Mm. You've got a healthy reserve situation, maintaining your international reserves at the current level. All of this is important, and I, I'm, not, I'm not particularly worried. Sure, that's very good. <laughs> now, w we have the electricity uh, program that has been going on. We want to increase the number of people that are connected to electricity. And at least that is the government's uh, target by uh, 2017. And then Juan Muguaneza Feliste comes up and tells us, uh, please tell us about the Randa Electricity Access Scale-Up and sector-wide approach development project that was recently launched uh, in partnership between World Bank and the government of Rwanda. 
Yes, we're very happy to work with the government of Rwanda and with other donors in helping the government of Rwanda achieve their electricity access targets. These are ambitious targets, yep. but we believe they're very important. Electricity access is important for kids who want to study at night time. They're important for health centers who need to keep vaccines cool. Uh, they're important for small businesses which generate jobs in rural areas. Yep. So we're very much with the government on, the, on their access goals. Uh, what we do is we, we support the government with investment money to put up the transmission lines and to keep the distribution network running. Um, in the period that this project has been running, it's gone up from between about, I think about 100,000 connections to closer to 500,000 connections. So that's not a bad rate of increase yeah. over, over the, over the four-year period. Yeah. We're just about to bring a new project to our board, which will which will carry this work forward into the, into the future as well. So we look forward to helping the government achieve these ambitious targets. I think they're looking for 48% of yeah. the population with access to mm -hmm. electricity. Uh, and, you know, that, that's a tough target, but we're, we're, we're here to help them. With Very that. good. And now I'll bring in the last one, but not the least question. And now we're mm -hmm. going away from Rwanda mm -hmm. over to Greece, where Ted Kaberuka says, what can you say about the current uh, economic crisis of Greece and what lesson Rwanda can learn from it while joining the ESC or East African Community Monetary Union? Well, I think the first the first point I would make is to bring it back to Rwanda. Rwanda is not Greece and yeah. uh, East Africa is not Europe. Yeah. Um, there's a complicated situation in the Eurozone with many different economies with different performance levels, different uh, fiscal status, uh, different structures to their economy. And it's always more difficult to form a monetary union when the economies in that union are very different in, in nature and performance. Yeah. Um, you know, going forwards, as Rwanda and the other East African countries look forward to uh, building this monetary union, uh, Clearly, there's an awful lot of detailed work that would need to be done, sure. and you know they might want to look to Europe for some ideas, but I, but I think they shouldn't be too put off either by, by the situation in Europe. Regional integration is very important to Rwanda. As a small economy that's landlocked, it, it's going to be an important part of, yeah. regional integration is going to be an important part of Rwanda's future, so uh, they shouldn't be too put off. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. And thank you very much for making sure that you be part of the BQ. And do not forget, follow us on our Twitter handle at RTV English or on Facebook at RTV English Still. And have your say and have your questions answered by the people we bring on the BQ. Stay here with us.